I don't need the graph editor window anymore, so I'm going to close it by dragging on the white diagonal lines in the corner of the window below. In the view menu, toggle quad view. In the top view, pan, hold down shift and drag with the middle mouse button. Add mesh plane. I'm going to make the plane effectively an infinite ground plane by scaling by a very large number. Press S to scale followed by 1000 and enter. Click the material button. Add new material. I'm going to call the material ground. Click the diffuse color and make that green and darken it to about halfway. To make the runway Add Mesh Plane. Click the Object Properties of the Plane. Scale the plane too wide by 16 long. Move it in the Y direction by entering 12 in the Y location and move it up slightly by entering 0 0.01 in the Z location. Click the Material button. Add new material. Call the new material Runway and click the diffuse color and darken the gray about halfway. Next I'm going to set up the sky. I'm going to change the view so we can see the horizon. I'm going to toggle out of quad view and change the view from orthogonal to perspective. Zoom back with the mouse wheel and click the world button. Click the horizon color and set that to be blue and lighten that up. I'm going to use the built-in clouds texture. Click the textures button, click add new texture, click both to display the texture and what the world background will look like. At the moment the texture is not being applied. To apply the texture scroll down to the influence panel and tick horizon. Now if we scroll up we've got pink clouds. Click on the default texture color and change that to white. Now if we scroll up we've got white clouds. I'm going to change the texture color to black which gives us a darker moodier sky. How we display the sky in the scene I will deal with later. Next I want to look at camera angles. If I press play we see the jet take off but it's not a very exciting camera angle. I'm holding down shift and dragging with the middle mouse button to pan the view. I'm going to pan up until we're looking down the jet. I'm going to zoom in with the mouse wheel. Now if I press play, we get a more dramatic camera angle. We've navigated to a nice view, but in the view menu, if I change to look through the camera, notice the shortcut key is numpad zero. The camera is pointing in a completely different direction. I'm pressing zero on the numpad to go back to our view. Is there any way of moving the camera so that it has this view? The answer is yes there is. Go to the view menu, align view, align active camera to view and that moves the camera so it has the view. To fine tune the framing of the shot, zoom in with the mouse wheel. Click on the camera in the outliner window to select it. Press G to grab followed by Z and Z again and move the mouse. This will move the camera in its local Z direction forwards and backwards so we can fine tune the framing. Click when you like the framing, press play. To render the scene and to see what the sky looks like, click the render button and render image. The clouds texture is not very prominent. To fix that, click the world button. And by default, the texture is stretched 360 degrees around the scene. Click paper sky and the texture is less stretched. Now when we render the image, the cloud texture is clearer. I want to have two scenes, one where the jet is flying away from the camera and one where the jet is flying into the camera. The easiest way to do that is to save this file with a file name something like scene1, then immediately save as and call the second file something like scene2 and modify that file. 
Alternatively, Blender allows you to have more than one scene in the same file. If I name this scene Scene 1, I can click the Add New Scene button, make a full copy of this scene, name the new scene Scene 2. If I click the minus in the outliner window, we now have a set of objects in Scene 1 and a duplicate set of objects in Scene 2. I can now modify Scene 2. I'm dragging with the middle mouse button to rotate the view and that takes us out of camera perspective into user perspective. The 3D cursor, the camera and the 3D manipulator widget are all obscuring the jet. To fix this, click the plus to open up the properties panel, scroll down, click the black triangle to open up the display panel and tick only render. Now only the objects that will be rendered are displayed. Click this button to turn off the 3D manipulator widget. And an added bonus is that the horizon color is displayed. To navigate to an interesting camera angle, I'm going to use a mixture of zooming in and out with the mouse wheel. Shift and middle mouse button to pan and dragging with the middle mouse button to rotate the view. You can also navigate using the numpad keys and there are other combinations of keyboard and mouse. You can navigate while the animation is playing. Although I've navigated to a new view in the user perspective, scene 1 and scene 2 are still identical. If I move the camera so it's looking at this view, and to do that it's the view menu, align view, align active camera to view, now we have moved the camera and the scenes are different. I'm going to end the tutorial there. I have other tutorials that show various animation techniques, that show how to add sound effects, how to add titles, how to render an animation. These can be accessed at my YouTube channel or at my website www.freemovies.co.uk at the Blender channel there. Thanks for watching and goodbye.